development, testing, deployment, we're here, we wanna be here. So this is a problem that uh, not only have functional effects systems not so far given us great tools to solve, but they can actually make it harder for us to use our existing tools sometimes because functional effects systems are essentially building a new runtime and a new mini language on top of the JVM. And so application monitoring tools that are built for the JDM, JVM don't necessarily understand the language that a functional effects system speaks in. They don't understand what fibers are or how to report on them. And so it can actually, if anything, be a step back for developers who are used to all this tooling that they have in other languages. And we don't have a lot today with functional effects systems. The main thing we have is logging. So we've got like Zio has a Zio logging library. Other functional effects systems have their own equivalent of logging libraries. And those are great. Those are great libraries, but they're really in a way only addressing part of the problem of uh, actually yesterday, I, I heard a talk about um, this idea that, and this is actually unrelated to Zio, but that we're logging too much, that we should really think of application monitoring as having three pillars of logging being one of them, but metrics being one of them and tracing being the other one, and that we need to use all of those in a balanced way if we need to understand what's going on in our application diagnose issues. And that makes sense because when we log things, one, we're only recording a specific type of contextual information typically, and two, we're only logging things that we typically anticipate are gonna be some type of issue that we might wanna look back later of like, wrote here, read this. But a lot of times the things that blow up on us are the things that we didn't think about at all. We didn't log anything here because this seemed completely straightforward to us. But when we actually went and ran this at scale, something broke there and now we have no idea what's going on because we didn't put anything there because we didn't realize that was going to be the problem. So ZOZMX is really setting out to try to be uh, the solution for that for ZO applications of giving you a very straightforward way to understand exactly what's going on in your ZO application uh, when you're putting it into production. And so the first value proposition of Zio ZMX is that it seamlessly integrates with whatever existing application you have. So imagine you've got your, your whole application that your whole team's been putting your time into, millions of lines of code, ultimately comes down to one Zio program that you're gonna run. And to add monitoring to it with Zio ZMX, you don't have to change anything about that million lines of code except for two line changes at the top level. And so the first one here is we're gonna use this ZMX supervisor thing. And a supervisor is just something that is able to track the activity of fibers within a program. So every time a fiber gets forked or every time a fiber ends life that gets reported to the supervisor and the supervisor can handle that in some way, like in this case, by reporting it to the ZMX service and tracking that. And so we're just going to take whatever runtime we're already using to run our program. And we're just going to add that ZMX supervisor. And then the second thing is we're going to create a layer, like those layers that Kit talked about, that describes where we want these to go. So in this case, it's just going to go to localhost just for us to look at. And that's it. And all we do is we take our application, we run it the same way we would before, with just with this new runtime and providing that diagnostics layer. And so we don't have to change anything else in our application. And that's true even if we add our own user-defined metrics, we can add things to gauges, we can add them to histograms, we can do that at any layer of our application, and we don't have to change any other method signatures to do those things. 
So what do you get once you add those lines of code? Well, you, you get two types of things. So the first type of thing you get is you, do, is you get a set of diagnostics that we're always gonna provide to you on what's happening inside your Zio application and the Zio runtime. So with this, you're gonna get things like you're gonna be able to see a histogram of the lifetime of fibers. So how long are fibers executing before they end? And that can be helpful in saying, do you have a lot of extremely short running fibers where maybe at this point you're actually incurring more overhead and forking the fiber than you're getting benefit out of? Do you have a lot of very long running fibers? Is there something going on there as a process kind of runaway that um, really should have been interrupted somewhere, but there's something going on where that's not properly getting shut down or that's just continuing. You're also going to be able to see how the fibers ended um, as well as how many of them started. So you'll be able to see, um, did they end successfully? Did they fail? If they failed, how did they fail? What are the different breakdowns of they failed this way, this many times, they failed this way, this many times. Again, can be very helpful in diagnosing what's going on in your application. So those are gonna be available anytime and you don't have to do anything to get those. The second thing you get is you get your own user-defined metrics. So at any level of your application, you can, once you add a dependency on Zio's EMX, you can just add a new effect that will increment a counter, that will change a gauge, that will add a value to a histogram. And again, that doesn't require changing any of your other method signatures. You can drop that in anywhere in your application and that'll just work. And then finally, this integrates with all the tools that you're already working with. So if you're working with Prometheus, if you're working with StatsD, that are, there are integrations already built into Zio ZMX. Uh, there have been some great work from contributors where this actually doesn't even bring in a dependency on the interop libraries for these. This is all implemented uh, from the bottom up. So the only dependencies you add when you add Zio ZMX is Zio ZMX and Zio itself, which presumably you're already using if you're using the Zio monitoring solution. And so here's an example of what this uh, looks like. So uh, here we're using Datadog and we can uh, see some uh, different metrics that we've created um, all feeding from a Zio application and Zio ZMX. Um, so I think this is gonna be a really nice solution that is gonna help companies as they go from kind of exploring Zio to really using Zio to have that more comprehensive set of tools so that um, between this, the execution traces that uh, Zio pioneered, and we're actually in a minute gonna be talking about how those are getting even better, uh, as well as solutions like Zio logging, you really have a comprehensive set of everything you need to understand what's going on in your application. Uh, final thing here is I, I'd, I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank some of the other contributors who have uh, worked on this project. I think uh, within the Zio ecosystem, we're all a team, we're all a community, but within that there's a continuum of there are some features where someone really just like identifies something that they feel like this could be better and they kind of take that from an idea to a conclusion, like you saw some of the work that Kit did with Zlayer where he's just like, hey, this is like not as clear as it could be. I think I have an idea for a better way. And he kind of drove that. He got input from people as necessary and he got to this really great point. We're gonna see that later on with like the work that Rob did after this. Um, but then you also have some libraries like Zio ZMX where it's really been a community effort where there have been different people who've contributed different points, um, added features. So uh, Zio ZMX really started with Solar and John, some of their work last year. Um, Eric, or as some of us in the Zio community may know from Discord or GitHub Toxic Bunk, um, did a lot of work on some of the integrations and metrics as well. And then more recently, uh, Andreas did some really great work on the uh, Prometheus and StatsD implementations and really took that on all the way from kind of the data model to um, actually implementing those connections and demoing that. So I think it's a really great example that, um, you know, there's a lot of this that's kind of targeted for, for companies and users who are thinking of adopting at a large scale and that's fantastic, but there's also a lot of opportunities here for people, if you're at those companies or if you're not, who are just 
interested in Zio, interested in contributing to open source. There's so much growth going on that there, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for, uh, for anyone who wants to, to get involved. Uh, so I'd like to thank all these folks, everyone else who contributed to this and other Zio libraries who not on this page, uh, as well as all of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.